Hi, hello, uh, my name is David Reed. I'm the Head of Student Admissions here at Point Blank. This is my colleague, Mr. Ski Oakenfall, uh, and we're here to tell you about all the latest stuff that's going on at the school. Welcome to Friday Forum Live. Hello, welcome along. It's that time again. It's Friday. Uh, it's one o'clock in the UK. Uh, we've got lots of people watching from outside the UK. So um, if you are outside the UK, get in touch. Let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to hear from you. Um, the observant among you will have noticed that there's a different person on my right this week. Uh, this is Ski. Uh, he teaches the electronic music composition course uh, here at Point Blank. Um, and he'll be telling you a little bit more about some of the tricks and tips and techniques and material that's covered on that course. Uh, so we'll be returning to him in just a few minutes time and he'll be taking us through some of that material. Um, in the meantime, I've got a few things to tell you about. Um, it's a busy week uh, here at Point Blank. Uh, the courses at the college start on Monday. Um, so here in London, uh, we've got um, a whole heap of new students starting with us on Monday. So if you're planning to start a course with us on Monday and you're watching this live, hi, hello, we'll see you Monday. Um, give us a shout to let us know you're watching. Um, there are still some last minute places available. Um, some of the classes are full, um, others have got one or two places here and there. So if you want to come and take a class with us in London, there's DJ courses, music production courses, songwriting courses, um, sound engineering courses, all with last minute availability. So you can still book a place. Um, email us, um, enrol at pointblanklondon.com and we'll be able to tell you, um, you know, what the availability is like on the course that you're interested in. Um, yeah, a few other things to tell you about. Um, we're at Block. Uh, for those of you that are outside the UK, there's a big kind of music festival taking place in London this weekend. Uh, Block Festival, great lineup. Check it out if you haven't already. Uh, Ski will also be there, um, doing some demonstrations uh, in partnership with Ableton. So Ableton are hosting a kind of, um, sort of a floating cocktail bar. <laughs> apparently. Sounds pretty good to me. I'm You'd be a, full, do a floating demonstration. <laughs> a fool to miss out on that. A floating cocktail bar with Mr. Ski Oakenfall. Too good to miss, right? Exactly. Um, so, yeah, if you're in London, get yourself along to that. Um, I'm assuming there's still tickets available. If not, we'll be filming it. So we'll be down there with the cameras, um, showing you, you know, trying to give you a flavour of what's going on down at Block. Um, what else is there to tell you about? Oh yeah, next week um, we've got another of our free masterclasses. So we do, at the moment, we do one of these pretty much every month uh, where we invite in a professional producer or uh, maybe an artist manager or someone from the music industry who's kind of, you know, um, doing big things at the moment. We invite them in to do a, a kind of, uh, either to take us through one of their tracks or to explain a little bit about how they got started in the music industry. Um, essentially, it's like a free guest lecture. We broadcast them live, um, and on Tuesday, uh, we're being joined by Claude Von Stroke, who many of you, I'm sure, will be familiar with. Uh, he's a former Point Blank student. He's taken classes with us before, uh, and off the back of that, he's kind of become a friend of Point Blank. So we sponsored the recent um, Dirty Bird tour. Uh, but yeah, he'll be coming into the studios. He'll be giving us a, a kind of walkthrough of some of his tracks. So um, you know, you can tune in via our Beat TV channel. Um, if you don't know where that is, check out our Facebook page and all the details will be on there. Um, another good place to find out about all this stuff is, uh, is the blog. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, there's a blog uh, which is attached to our website and we update that pretty much daily. Uh, I don't know if you can see my screen, but there's, there's Claude obviously having a bit of a bad day. <laughs> uh, he'll be having a better day on Tuesday though when he's here doing a, a kind of uh, demo for us. So yeah, you'll find details of the Claude Von Stroke Masterclass. As you can see as I scroll down, there's details of the Block Festival there as well. Um, this was one of the other recent um, demo sessions that we did, uh, producer sessions that we did, uh, where Mele came in and did a, a, a sort of walkthrough of one of his tracks. Um, you, go, you can win a free course. Um, there's also this July offer that I mentioned last week, so if you recommend a friend uh, to a course here at Point Blank, you can earn money, you can basically get £30 off for every person that you uh, invite who ends up taking the course. So yeah, there's loads of stuff on the blog, um, have a good read through that. The other thing I wanted to mention to you just before we hand over to Ski um, was 
another thing that not everyone knows about, <clears throat> which is the free sample courses that exist on our website. If you're new to Point Blank and you're watching Friday Forum and thinking this sounds really cool, um, but I'd like to see a bit more about you know what's on the courses, what's included, how they work. I'm not quite clear on you know how it all works. These free course samples are a great way to do that. Um, all you need to do is head to the website, log in up here. So just enter your email address and password. Um, if you haven't got one, you can create one. It's free. You don't need to you know you don't need to pay anything. Um, and there's a whole range of uh, course material here that you can check out for free. So you just log in, um, pick the course that you'd like to try. So since Ski's here, we'll uh, we'll check out his course. We'll dive into the electronic music. Hey, there he is. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, essentially what this is is a few kind of selected highlights from the course. Um, bear in mind that the, the the kind of course itself will have loads more material on it. This is just a little taster. But as you can see, if we look down the left hand menu. There's some material on chords, chord progressions, bass lines. Um, let's have a look at chord progressions. Um, so yeah, as you can see on the course, we've got a few examples of chord progressions. These are all videos. So um, anything with a play logo on it like this is basically a, a video tutorial that you can watch. You'll be familiar with the video tutorials if you've watched our YouTube channel or um, you know seen some of the or, or you've checked out the blog because they're all posted on there on a regular basis. But yeah, as you scroll down, um, there's some course notes as well. So we'll just sort of scan through some of this so you can see. There's a, an audio player here, so you can check out some um, example bass lines. Uh, again, more videos here. Let's see if this is going to fire up. There you go. So you just open up the video, and we've got a nice tutorial video here that just guides you through making a bass line on Ableton. So these are all free. Free classes includes, you know, I'd say probably eight to ten of these videos. And as I say, the real course, if you uh, enrol, includes loads more. So if you want to get a taste of how the courses work, um, that's a great way to do it. I'll also mention DVR briefly as well. So if you go to the end, um, you can watch an example of a DVR video. So this is basically Ski going through a student's track, giving some feedback and some pointers. Um, as we did with uh, Danny on Friday Forum a couple of weeks back. So yeah, if you've got nothing uh, to do this weekend and you want to uh, find out more about what we do, try some of the free courses. It's a great way to kind of, you know, get yourself uh, up to speed with, with what we do. So um, yeah, at this point I'll hand you over to Ski. Um, as I said, he teaches the Electronic Music Composition course. It's been massively popular since we launched it uh, and you're about to find out why. So uh, yeah, he's going to guide you through some of the um, material that we look at on, on that course um, on Ableton Live. So over to Ski. Okay, thank you very much. So um, I'm going to look at something today. It's actually something that I've made a video um, on before, but I made it um, before I started developing the course, the Electronic Music Composition course. And uh, it's, uh, I titled it Arpeggiated Chord Pattern Generator. And um, <clears throat> Once it went up, there were kind of it got it was it got a really good reaction and uh, got quite a lot of comments and um, it kind of uh, people were asking about some of the more musical elements of it. So I thought today I'd kind of revisit um, this tutorial, um, but include uh, you know some of those more musical elements and um, use it as a vehicle to kind of talk a little bit about electronic music composition and. Um, Electronic Music Composition is a course that's really been born out of um, uh, some of the tutorials that I've done and the courses that I've taught where people have uh, come to making music not specifically from a musical training background. They've um, you know, got into beats, they've got, a, they've got the software, they just wanted to make music but they haven't had a strict kind of training or whatever, you know, knowing about scales and chords and that kind of thing. And the challenge with the course was to try to um, teach a bit of that theory, but not, in, not as if you're kind of uh, having a piano teacher who's forcing you to play scales and, uh, and learn pieces specifically, but more like kind of analysing and looking, breaking down existing uh, dance tracks, electronic music tracks, and really just trying to see what's going on. So um, without further ado, let's uh, have a look at this. And um, I'm using as an inspiration this track by Jimpster, 
and it's on a, one of his free range compilations called Inside the Loop. And uh, I'll give you a little blast of uh, the track now. This is just a loop of a, of a sort of section that comes in the middle. And the thing I loved about this is this kind of rising pattern, just kind of going up and down. And um, I kind of thought, I wonder how I could recreate that in Ableton. So, um, and Ableton's brilliant, it's got some fantastic uh, MIDI devices. And uh, <clears throat> so I set about having a go, trying to do it. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to play along first, and the first thing I want to establish is uh, what key we're in. I'm just going to get a uh, sound here. Hear that? I'm just going to turn it up a little bit. So I'm playing a D here. I'm just going to bring up my uh, virtual MIDI keyboard. And if I play these notes here, we're playing notes from the D minor scale. So trying to play along with that, it's a bit like this. Quite like a sort of minor pentatonic. So we're in D minor, and um, let's first of all find a sound. So I'm just going to drag over a sound now. Now the first thing I want to do is to uh, create a chord. And this chord here is a D minor triad. And it's sort of something like this, kind of going up and down the scale, up and down the uh, scale, playing a chord. And uh, Ableton's perfect for this kind of thing. It has a chord device. So I'm just gonna bring that up now. Here it is. You can see here, I'll just try to zoom in. These are our MIDI effects in Ableton. So I'm just gonna drag that down. There we go. And uh, I'll just zoom in a bit more so you can see what's going on. <clears throat> now what we want to do is to be able to hold down a note here, but we want the output to be this. So what we need to do is to work out our semitone intervals. So the first one, this note here, is uh, three semitones. So if we go up from this root note here, it goes one, two, three. So we're going to type in three here, and you can see now, when I hold down the note, it's playing that F as well, the D and the F. And the next note we want is this A. So if we go up uh, again, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the next one we want to type in is seven. So we've got. So we're getting there. Um, I'm just going to play a beat um, and we can sort of pretty much hear what it's going to sound like. Now, it's, it's kind of getting there, but you can hear there's some slight kind of odd notes that aren't really fitting. And um, that's the kind of the problem with the chord device. It's not really a problem, but what it's doing is it's not playing the notes in the actual diatonic scale. So it's effectively, let me just bring the uh, keyboard up again. It's effectively going. What we want to do is to force it to only play these notes in the D minor scale. So, for that, we're going to use the scale device, which is uh, another great thing in Ableton. And uh, what's that's, that's going to actually force the output of the chord device to only play in D minor. So I'm just dragging that after the chord device. And um, actually, I'm going to choose one of the presets because it's got some good presets here. I'm going to choose the uh, C minor one but I'm going to change the bass here. I've just tried to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to change the bass to D. And now if we play up and down the scale. So 
sounding a bit better. There's one note that's slightly weird, which is this one here. And I'm just going to change this one note up there. So it's sounding a bit better now. So if we just play the beat, we can just see what it sounded like. Okay, so that's sounding better. Now, what would be really cool is to, rather than having to play that, to actually, um, <coughs> if we sort of played some notes for it, actually, actually to uh, play sort of automatically. And for that, we can use the arpeggiator device. So I'm just going to drag that over now. I'm just going to put that uh, before the chord device. There we go. So I'm just going to bring up my keyboard again virtual keyboard. So you can see now what's happening is that I'm playing down, holding down these notes and it's playing it uh, up the scale for us. So let's just play the beat again. Now that's really cool but it's not, it's a, a little bit different to the uh, Jimster track in the Jimster track had a kind of off rhythm. The, it was actually the, the chords were starting on the, on the off beat. And in order for us to achieve that in Ableton with the arpeggiator, we need to uh, <coughs> adjust this setting here, which is the sync setting. Let me just zoom in. And um, it's basically kind of snapping at the moment to uh, the bar. And if we turn on this, then we turn it into free mode. And uh, we, then we can then adjust this using the rate, the time. So before we were at 1 8th which are quaver notes. So we want to know what uh, the timing is going to be for our tempo. And tempo at the moment is 116. So uh, we can use a, a delay calculator for that. And um, I found one here, there's a website. It's called the whippingpost.co.uk and it's got a tool, a delay time calculator tool. So if we just type in the BPM here and click on calculate, and you can go down and we can see that one eighth note is 258.621 milliseconds. So if we, if we just uh, round it up to 259 and type that in as our rate. Again, I'm just going to... It will then mean that we can actually play this arpeggio from any point uh, in the bar. So I'll just play it again. So that's working really well. And um, the next thing I thought was like, hang on a minute, I'm, I'm playing down, I'm playing these notes, I'm holding them all down. Um, we could actually put a chord device before the arpeggiator, another chord device. And, uh, and then all, all I need to do is just hold down one note and uh, it's gonna play that arpeggio for me, that chord arpeggio. So um, I'm gonna grab another chord device and I'm gonna put that uh, before the arpeggiator there. And uh, I'm just going to program in these notes here. So let me quickly do that. So we've got a two semitones. The next one is a three semitones. Next one is five semitones. Next one is seven. And the last one is 10. There we go. And now, hey presto, just have to hold down one note and it's playing that chord up the scale. And uh, we can adjust the steps so it actually goes, um, covers more than one octave. So here there's the steps function. So if we go to select two, then it's going to actually cover three octaves in total. Cool. So that is going in the right direction. Um, so let's play the beat now and hear how it's going to sound. Record that in, and uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to make sure that uh, the quantize is on. Record quantization on. I'm going to put that 16 note quantization. We could we could put that on afterwards, but I'm just going to put that in. There we go. So 
you can see from the MIDI here, the only thing that's playing is just one note. And um, we can kind of spice that sound up a little bit. Let's maybe try to widen it a little bit with some chorus. So let's put some uh, chorus on that. There we go. And um, as is very common to do with um, these arpeggios, we could uh, try a bit of, bit of delay, a bit of ping pong delay. Just take that dry wet value down a little bit. And the great thing about having um, ping pong delay uh, after an arpeggio is that it responds really nicely to uh, frequency cutoff. So uh, you can see it's frequency cutoff here on my analog device. If I adjust that, it's really nice. And then I'm actually going to assign that frequency cutoff to a, uh, a knob on my um, on my Novation Remote SL MIDI controller. So I'm just going to click this MIDI button here and just click on the frequency control. Wheel it around a little bit. So let's put the beat back in. Cool, so that's working really nicely. So, um, what I'm going to do now is uh, look to add some music to that. And um, first of all, I've got a, uh, a road sound. So I'm going to try to find some chords and think about um, what notes are going to work with this. Because like I said before, we're, we're in D minor. Now, with minor scales, we have, uh, there are various different types of minor scale. And um, the one that, <coughs> the most uh, simple one to learn is called the natural minor. And um, this is basically including uh, the sharps and flats that are in that particular key. So for D minor, for example, let me just bring up my uh, keyboard again. Um, we have one flat, which is this B flat. But it's quite common, especially in a lot of um, dance music, modern music, to actually, rather than playing this B flat, to actually have this B. And this is uh, it's basically like a kind of sharpening. Uh, the six, and um, I'm not going to get too much into it, but it's actually that's the Dorian mode. So it means we can then play these kind of chords. If we were just playing in, within the natural minor chord, then we're playing this, and that just sounds a little bit too sort of classical and uh, not not so nice. So, so these are kind of, these are the kind of chords that I think are going to work. So. Um, Uh, I'll page a bit. So I'm actually playing a uh, D minor 9 here. And this is all stuff that we cover in the uh, electronic music composition course. So I'm going to put that in as a little uh, idea. So I'm just going to uh, loop that up. I'll just jump in and do a few uh, sure. shout outs while you're, while you're working there. So sure. People sort of tuned in from around the globe. So, so far we've got, uh, there's a few names I recognise on here actually. So there's a few people tuning in every week, uh, which is nice to see. So yeah, we've got Dubai, uh, Higher Digital Puppy in Dubai, Christian in Antwerp, uh, De Dead Dude in London. <laughs> Dead dude. <laughs> Terra Jumper in uh, Antwerp. I know uh, he's been with us before. Uh, A Kerbal in Germany. Again, that's a name I recognise. Mark Me Up I recognise as well in Bristol. Uh, Bingley, Yorkshire. Uh, Newcastle. What else we got? Oh, Serbia. Um, Wolf, Wolf Pyroman in Serbia. Um, so, yeah, nice to have you all with us. Uh, thanks for tuning in. <clears throat> um, if you've got any questions based on what you're watching, um, just 
yeah, type them into the comments. We'll try and tackle them as we go. But um, yeah, for now, I'll hand it back to Ski. Cool. Okay, so we've got got our bit of the groove here, and um, next thing I want to think about is a bass line. And I'm going to use the sound uh, that I created a while back. It's um, Julio Bashmore bass, and uh, I created this using the analog. So let's bring my keyboard back up so we can see what's going on. So the challenge is to put something in that's going to fit with what we've got at the moment. And uh, <coughs> with bass lines, with this, like, we're kind of we're in we're in D minor, so we want to really be mindful that we want to kind of work around this D note here because this is working really well. But we can deviate and move around a little bit to create something else. Something like that could work. So let's uh, just go and edit that. So I just got to set the loop. I just uh, didn't get the loop right there. Okay. And the next thing I want to look at is the beat that I've got is quite uh, swung whereas the arpeggio is quite straight. Um, I'm just gonna play that to you there. So what would be really cool would be to take the MIDI output, take the notes that are being output from that arpeggiator and put them into a new clip. And um, then we can add quantize, we can maybe have a look at the notes, we can adjust things or whatever. So I'm just gonna do that for you now. So I'm just going to uh, create a new MIDI track and put that uh, after this arpeggio here. And uh, what we need to do is uh, look at this MIDI from, I'm just gonna zoom in. Okay, and uh, the MIDI from, we're gonna choose this, it's ACPG, arpeggiator called Pattern Jane to reference the second one here. And then there are a load of settings here. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna select uh, post effects. If I put the monitor on, you can see that it's actually coming in there. So I'm going to hit record. And there we go. You can see the notes, chords being generated, going in nicely there. Cool, there we go. So I'm just going to uh, loop that. We only need two bars of that actually. What we can then do is uh, redirect that MIDI back into this arpeggiated chord pattern gen generator channel. Um, but we can, uh, we, we can take off uh, a lot of these devices. So we can take off the chord, I'm just muting that, the arpeggiator, the chord and the scale. And then here, just zoom in again, uh, if we take the MIDI 2 and we choose this uh, ACPG ref here, take the record off, and just turn the monitor in. Okay, so we've got our MIDI now, which we can have a look at. I'm just going to crop that, go to the crop clip. And uh, you can see in my groove pool here, Using, I'm using these uh, notator uh, swings, quantizes. So I'm just going to, let's just try the notator 16 suite, uh, 16C. And uh, maybe that's a bit severe. Let's try the uh, B. Cool. And we can just copy this down and start developing the arrangement.
we go. And um, what might be quite cool is to uh, try recording this into uh, an arrangement and then we can uh, add some automation. You can actually uh, add clip modulation or automation within these clips, but um, because I've set up uh, this remote SL um, controller knob to adjust the cutoff frequency, um, <coughs> it's best to do that from within the arrangement. So let's just record a section of this and uh, just hit record. There we go, we can see it going in there. Cool, so let's uh, try looping that. There's a few questions coming in actually. Okay, cool. We can sort of jump in and tackle some of those and then okay. maybe return to the track in just a sec. So yeah, just to make sure we cover these before the end. Um, so Asura said, uh, can you ask if it's worth doing piano lessons even though it's super expensive or is there a cheaper alternative which is as effective uh, and how long it took him to get his ability? <laughs> Well, uh, well, basically that's what the electronic music composition course is designed for. Um, a lot of people have been tweeting me, asking me, you know, before they've started the course, you know, do I need to take piano lessons? Should I prepare? Should I get ready? And I really designed the course to um, <coughs> be for people who didn't need to do that. You know, we really, we really going to go in uh, at the start, at the beginning of of theory, and uh, we talk about key signatures. And <coughs> I've actually. I mean, one of the most kind of tedious, boring things to do when you're learning piano as a kid, or I did, is learning scales. But in a way, there's kind of no way of getting around it. You know, you have to kind of know, in order to, to choose the right chords and bass lines, you've got to know what notes are in a key. Um, so what I've done is I've actually created uh, these sort of video, play-along videos that uh, are embedded inside Logic and Ableton projects. Um, and they just allow you to, in your spare time, just kind of play along and... Um, <clears throat> but I, I would say that, you know, just just jump into the course and see how you get on. And if you feel like afterwards it's it's inspired you and you're and you're getting on well. And if you did want to take some kind of private lessons afterwards, then 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 that's cool, you know. But I think that by the end of the course, hopefully you'll you'll um, really kind of have a much better understanding of of uh, musical theory and playing as well. It's a question we get asked a lot, actually, is, is, you know, to make electronic music, do I need to take piano lessons or do I need to learn how to play an instrument? And that was, as Ski said, that was very much the inspiration for this course, really. Yeah. Um, so Digital Puppy was saying, uh, wanted to know if uh, you teach track arrangement on the EMC course as well. Again, that's one of the things that, that uh, I really wanted to tackle. It's something from, you know, the courses, the production courses that I've been um, teaching where uh, gen generally a lot of the point blank courses we, we have assignments uh, every week and um, <clears throat> by the last week uh, the idea is to is to have sort of a finished track you know something that um, can can be finished and has been developed over the over the course um, but in a way that's often the hardest thing to do is like lots of people have got loops and ideas and things that they've never finished off um, but you know that's really encompasses part of the electronic mu uh, music composition course is thinking about arrangements and dynamics and sections you know you might you might have one great groove like we've got one here but maybe we can we can uh, create a b section somewhere for it to go you know and in that way i talk about um you know more traditional side of songwriting where you might have a verse and a chorus and a middle eight and a bridge <coughs> and um but to relate it to electronic music composition because you know, it, it exists, it's there. And if you have that understanding, you know, you can really apply that to your more electronic kind of dance tracks as well. So, yeah, we definitely, you know, the, in, in the last week, <clears throat> um, I basically start with, start from square one, start with an idea, little little kind of groove. And uh, then I kind of find an a cappella. I, I kind of, I, I add that. And then uh, by the end of the end of the lesson, I've got a finished tune. And I even then, Look at, look at extending it into like a seven, eight minute dance version as well. So that's definitely something that we cover. That's a yes then. That's a yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jojo Circus Boy, where can I get a good quality synthesizer for a cheap price? I would say, I mean, hopefully if you've been watching the tutorial and you've been watching Ski at work on Ableton, there's 
some great synths included in Ableton. Um, and it's, it's not really clear from your question, you know, sort of how much experience you've got or whether you want to buy, you know, like a hardware synthesizer, which some people do. Um, if you're just looking for the sounds, then the, the synths that come bundled with Ableton are great that's if fantastic. you learn how to use them. Um, and that's something we look at on um, the sound design course, which goes in depth on things like analog and operator. Um, so once you know your way around those synthesizers and you can start creating your own sounds, all you need is a MIDI controller keyboard like, like this one. Um, and, and that's your synth right there, you know. Um, there's loads of great sort of software synths out there, but I think what a lot of students do is, is perhaps overlook the software they've already got. So, you know, if you've got a copy of Logic, you've got some fantastic synths bundled with that. Same with Ableton. Um, and so, you know, I wouldn't kind of, you know, jump straight into spending money on, you know, um, you know, sort of hardware synth that you found on eBay or, um, you know, spending vast amounts on kind of software, you know, third-party plugins because the, the instruments you've got in Ableton are really good quality if you learn how to use them. Definitely. That would be my take on that. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, I'm sure I was asking about uh, ripping vocals from YouTube. Um, someone's actually already answered that and, as, as to how you do it technically. From a sort of um, slightly different perspective, I'd say be careful for two reasons. One being copyright. <laughs> If you're ripping vocals off YouTube, you don't own the copyright. So if you're making a track with a, a vocal that you've sort of lifted from YouTube um, and you're intending to sell it, then you could land yourself in some hot water there. Secondly, the quality on YouTube varies enormously. So, um, yeah, just, I mean, again, just be aware of that because obviously, you know, if you're making tracks with sort of slightly ropey quality vocals, that's going to let your track down. I don't know whether you've got any feelings on that, Ski. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, you know, you just you have to be kind of really mindful of of, uh, of copyright, you know. But there are lots of producers who um, actively put out a cappellas, you know, and I would, you know, because if if they get used, then I think they're assuming that you know you'd contact them and you get permission um, to you know copyright permission to use it. So. Uh, as long as you're kind of going in with that attitude. I mean, I th I, quality wise, I, I, I wouldn't kind of, that wouldn't be too much of an issue with me because I think, you know, there's, there's actually quite a quality about having something that's a bit kind of low bit and, yeah. you know, a bit, a bit rough sounding. So, that, so that's fine. And uh, if it's something that you can get really quickly and then you want to, you know, gives you an idea and inspiration, then, then I'd say go for it, you know, but just make mm. sure you know where it's coming from. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of the, um, there are a lot of places to get sort of legitimate acapellas these days as well. I think I'm right in saying that Beatport do acapellas to, to download, you know, for, for certain tracks. As you say, you know, if producers put them up, then... Well, Joey Negro, uh, a few months ago, released a, you know, a compilation of about 20 of his uh, acapellas from Sunburst Band, and he put it on his site for like, he, for some reason there was some technical problem, he couldn't put it there for free, so it was there for like 1p. Mm. But it's there because, you know, if you're going to use it, then, you know, he could potentially get some, get some royalties for it, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. Um, there's also a question from Busby333. Do you know any way of changing the global tuning in live? Uh, I'm interested in making something in a solfeggio scale. A system of tuning previous time. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> way beyond me. <laughs> um... Not, I think I might have had someone on, on, on my EMC course actually who asked a, uh, a similar thing, but no, I think he's, talk, well, he's talking about kind of micro tuning or something. I mean, uh, yeah, you, I suppose you could kind of, if you're just talking about changing the pitch of the output of the whole track, then I suppose that would be possible, but uh, I'm not sure if, you know, exactly, exactly what he wants to achieve with that. So, okay. Um, bum, 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 bum. What else have we got? Um, yeah, sure. It's come back on the vocal um, issue that we were just talking about. You know, sourcing vocals from um, YouTube. Uh, I want to get away from the cliche vocal sounds and make my tracks more unique. Yeah, I think we've sort of tackled that really. And then Digital Puppy says, um, in the EMC course, do you also tackle drum arrangements and patterns, or is it all melodies and bass lines? I'd say it's more sort of about the melodic content, really, rather than. Yeah, I don't really else. concentrate concentrate too much uh, on drums, but I mean, I'm, I also, alongside EMC, um, I'm uh, teaching uh, Ableton Deep House, and uh, I mean, it's a four week course, and the first week is just all drums and beats. So I would say, you know, if you want to uh, get more into that, then going for that kind of course would be would be good for. Yeah, it, it's know. definitely covered in detail on a lot of the other courses. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a deep house course. We do uh, also sort of specialist pro producer courses on dubstep, and um, there's EDM courses, trance courses. So whatever sort of style uh, of music that you're you're working in, there'll be um, you know drum programming and rhythm programming techniques that are appropriate to that style on those pro producer courses. That's a good place to find those. And like I said earlier on, you know, if you want to get a taste of some of that material. Um, then the free sample courses are a great place to do that. That'll give you a flavour of what to expect. Um, we're pretty much wrapping up now, I think. Um, we're there or thereabouts. So, yeah, thanks to everyone for tuning in. Um, we'll be uh, back same time next week. Don't forget the Claude Von Stroke uh, Masterclass on Tuesday that I mentioned earlier. Full details on the Facebook page. Also, don't forget classes start at the college on Monday. Um, so it's, there's still um, a chance to join us here in London if you want to come and take classes here. Um, and if you've got any questions about any of the things we've talked about today or any of the courses that we offer, uh, just drop us a line, um, advice at pointblanklondon.com or advice at pointblankonline.net and we'll be happy to tackle your questions for you. But for now, um, it's goodbye from us here in London and uh, thanks for tuning in.